Dust off the clubs and make sure you look good for the camera, Coach Co. We are about to preview most of the spring season. Show us your best moves and all of your sweet shots. So get on track and run for that favorite spot. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. We're all getting all set for the spring season. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a while since we, we've been here, but uh, the spring, you know, we got this great early weather, and then everything went south right as teams were ready to get into act actual action. Yeah, it's been a few weeks. You think people missed us? I know I missed you. Right. Yeah, I think right. people missed us. Well, yeah, the the uh, the... Well, the weather was kind of a drawback for some of the winter sports. It's been great for the spring teams. They were able to get out from day one uh, of practice, but this last week uh, as they were ready to start action, the tennis team actually was supposed to be the first one to start competitions. They had scheduled uh, their first match against Champlain Park for Tuesday. Uh, it rained. They postponed till Wednesday. It rained. Oh, no surprise. Uh, they postponed. They are actually doing that right now Thursday afternoon as we uh, sit here getting ready to do the show. So uh, getting their first taste of competition. So the baseball team actually has one game uh, under their belts. So they did play uh, on Wednesday of this week, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, they were able to uh, take the, ro the ride down to Stillwater to get their first action in. Yeah, a lot of stuff to talk about, yep. though, as we talked about. I'm uh, going to try and preview most of, of the teams. Uh, a couple of teams uh, just started this week uh, that we hope to preview on our next program. There was so much action, we're going to have to spread it out to two shows. Well, this should be an exciting season for the tennis program, one for the Cardinals have been building towards for the past few years. With the amount of talent and experience they have to start the season, the Cardinals are poised to make a push toward the top of the conference. They've been trending in the right direction the past few seasons, and this season they could be legitimate conference contender. And I think, you know, if, if we continue to go on track to where we're at in practice, we're going to have a successful season. This is a season the Cardinals have been working towards, and they're really excited about the potential they have in the lineup. I think we'll do better because we had a lot of newer players last year in the lineup that never played before. We graduated really two players off of last year's team, so that means we got eight back out of the ten. So I think we're going to do much better on paper, but that doesn't always mean it's going to materialize from last year to this year. It's not just the added experience, but the way the veterans are approaching the season and their work ethic, they're helping to instill in their younger teammates. Uh, just hitting more balls. I mean, obviously, that's all you got to do is keep hitting balls, stay after, and uh, play in the weekends a lot more and get the guys out. The Cardinals finished the season right at 500 last year, and they're looking to take the next step this season. The work they're putting in is paying off, and they plan to stay the course. Just going to keep our game plan the same. I think just overall, the whole team has improved as um, a team we've grown together. So. The growth they're going through and the experience they've gained gives the Cardinals a lot of extra options that should make them an even more dangerous opponent. Well, they're like playing doubles, you can play. It's more, more versatile this year, so we can play with more people. We can go to various lineups, wherever. Depending on our opponent, we can adjust so we can win those matches. It'll be good. The confidence levels are as high as they've been for this Cardinals program as they have been in years. And it's not just what they're doing on the court, but the players' off-court performance is really driving them to success. We have a lot of leaders on our team. So right there, that's a big influence. They're great young men, they're respectful, they do well academically. So all those, I think, carries over. And they work hard on the court. So, I mean, that's gonna be a big influence. The spring season goes by very fast. And while the Cardinals seem primed and ready, they know they have to take it one match at a time. Just stay focused. I mean, you got it's tennis is definitely a mental game, and you got to be in every point and play every point to the best of your ability. So if we just stay focused on that, then we'll be good. The Cardinals were 10 and 10 last year, and could have easily been 15 and 5. They're hoping this season they turn the corner. We lost a lot of close matches, and maybe part of that was due to the experience. So now that we have the experience, it should be a fun season. Well, we missed out on the fun and our opportunity to see them in action. We were scheduled to do that uh, match against Champlain Park on Tuesday. Yep. Tried to do it on Wednesday as well. Um, unfortunately, uh, we'll just have to try and catch up with them later. But uh, they get the season. They had to move it indoors for Thursday to get that match in. Uh, they hope to be outside next week 
at Spring Lake Park on Monday and then hosting Anoka on Wednesday. That would be the 11th and the 13th. Yeah, we actually that first week of, of practice that the teams opened, I think it was the 21st, we were hoping to get them because we did baseball, we did softball, and we just ran out of time. Would have been nice to get them outside on the courts. Yeah, it was uh, it was you know, close to 60 that day. Yep. Uh, sent the cameras back out the next day, and it was 40. Welcome to Minnesota. Yeah, no surprise. That's, that's the way it goes. As we talked about, the baseball team did get its first action in uh, on t Wednesday of this week. They traveled to Stillwater. Unfortunately, they're blanked by the, the ponies. Only a couple of hits for the Cardinals. Uh, Jake Demovic and Jake Hansen both going one for three. Uh, Jake Hansen also the losing pitcher. A solid performance, though, really. Four innings pitch, gave up five hits, only two runs. One of them earned one strikeout and one walk. But... Uh, you got to be able to put the ball in play. You got to be able to get runs across the plate if you hope to be successful, especially once they start the conference. Yeah, I know Ray Wellner pitched a shout out inning, I think, in the sixth. And they actually had a scrimmage the Monday before against Creighton, and they, and they got a lot of guys at the plate. Um, they were able to uh, get a lot of pitchers involved, and they really, I, I talked to uh, Coach Bright, had a really good scrimmage. And then coming into that game, I know they would have liked to put some offense on the board. Yeah, they, the bats will get going. The bats yes. are typically. Usually takes a while for everybody's bats to get going, so uh, hopefully uh, they'll be able to get that going relatively soon. This could be a challenging season for the Cardinals baseball program as they look to replace a lot of talent that they lost to graduation. Early indications are they will be able to come out strong and not miss a beat. They once again have a senior-dominated lineup, but they feel they have the talent and skill necessary to be a contender in the always tough Northwest Suburban Conference. Uh, we try to set the bar high. I think we have over the years. And there are always high expectations for the Cardinals baseball team. Despite the fact that they lost a huge amount of talent to graduation, they're confident they can exceed those expectations this spring. I think we got hitters one through nine all through the lineup. Um, just really contact hitters, so we're going to put the ball in play a lot. Give us a great opportunity to score a lot of runs this year. The Cardinals are hoping they can cut down on the runs allowed at the same time. The team's ERA was close to four and a half last season. They return a couple of their starters and have a plethora of other pitching prospects they believe will give opposing hitters fits. Well, we have at least four starters I know of right now, so that's a good bullpen or a good starting rotation right there. But um, we got a lot of relievers that could just come in after and that could help out with the starters if they don't do so hot. But hopefully they could play the whole game, which they probably could be with their arms. In addition to the losses from graduation, the Cardinals are already dealing with a major loss to injury. Noah Koss broke his collarbone playing hockey this spring and will be out for the season. That's going to hurt us a little bit because he was a middle of the order guy, uh, but it does give a, you know somebody else a chance to play. One benefit for the Cardinals is that they have tremendous depth and there's always someone waiting for their opportunity. As they start the season, the coaches feel confident about the product they're going to be able to put on the field. Some years I can predict that we're going to be weak in certain positions, and I think this year we've got just about everybody covered. We don't quite have the experience I would like, but we've got the positions covered with athletic people. Having a wealth of depth and talent is not unique in this conference. There are a handful of teams in the Northwest Suburban that always seem to find themselves among the state's elite. And there's no reason to believe it will be any different this year. It'll be a dogfight again, as it always is, and that I, I think we'll be uh, in the hunt. I'm not predicting anything other than, you know, we'll be pretty competitive. So there you see it. And the, the hitting, you know, talking to some of the guys, they did feel like they really were going to be a solid hitting ball club. Uh, but it gets a little different from BP uh, hitting against pitchers you know yep. to seeing actual live arms and guys who are trying to strike you out. Yeah, and I think it'll be interesting to see their pitching staff because as, as you talked about and as uh, the guys and Coach Coe talked about, they've got three, possibly four pitchers this season that, that can really throw some quality innings. So if you get a staff that, that can give you that kind of output, you get those bats going, it'll be exciting. Well, we will get our first opportunity to see the team in action next Tuesday when they host Anoka, weather permitting, of course. They will also host Elk River next Thursday, so uh, right into it with a couple of strong Northwest Suburban teams. Yeah, looking forward to it. I looked ahead at the weather, and I think we should be okay for next week, so fingers right. crossed. 
coming from the CTN meteorologist. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> well, the softball team will open the season next week with a pair of home games against a couple of top teams in the Northwest Suburban. It will be a great test for a young team that seems to be up and coming. In the past two seasons, the Cardinals have shown significant improvements, and this year they seem to be poised to take yet another stride towards success. I'm excited. I think it's going to be a good like turning point for us. The spring is starting with a lot of optimism for the Cardinals softball program. They finished strong last season and hope to pick up right where they left off. Um, I thought the first week went well. We got outside faster than usual, so that was nice. We lost a lot of seniors, but I think we have some new girls too that are gonna step up nicely. The replacement parts in the Cardinals camp seem as if they could be an upgrade for a program on the rise. They have a lot of new faces on the field, but they also have veterans who will help bring the rookies up to speed quickly. Uh, I think just experience helps because a lot of these girls are still nervous their first time playing with varsity and just the communication throughout the team and stuff. It took a while for the Cardinals to get going last year, something they're hoping to avoid this time around. Early indications are getting out of the gates shouldn't be a problem for this squad. Yeah, I think we're pretty ready. Like, obviously, like I said, things to work on, but those are just little things. Like, as together, as a, like a whole, we're working pretty good as a team already, so I think it'll be a good. The Cardinals have had a couple of scrimmages already. While they weren't able to come away with any wins, they felt good about the way they played and their potential for the season. Overall, we got good hits and we fielded pretty good, but there is just some running mistakes and like just the little stuff that we need to brush up on before we play our first game. Just to like the basics, we've been kind of, we just forgot, you know, during the off season. I like the communication, the hustle. Um, we really started stressing quality at bats last year and we saw a lot of those in the scrimmage. Um, in addition to that, I think we took a lot of extra bases and had some good base running and our young girls performed well. Coach Nee Neighbor says there's a lot of young talent on the field that is really pushing the level of play. The competition and practices is intense and it means everyone has to up their game if they want to make the starting day roster. Uh, we still need to sort out a couple of our positions in the field. We're not quite sure who's going to start yet. Um, and when we went to the scrimmage, we learned a little bit about some of those girls. We still need to do some more. We have another scrimmage coming up. Uh, I also think that uh, we just need to stress that every at-bat counts, every pitch matters. If these Cardinals can play to their potential, it's possible they could compete for a conference title this season and for years to come. Because I think this is the turning point. Like, I'm ready to see this is next couple years we're going to be bad news. <laughs> Start calling them the Bears. Yeah, bad news bears, but a tough, tough test for this team right out of the gates. They host Anoka on Tuesday, Elk River on Thursday. We'll be at the Thursday we game will. against Elk River. Those teams, I believe, finished two and three respectively in the Northwest Suburban last season. Well, three three things. First and foremost, Alyssa Hansen, congratulations, the Athena Award winner for Coon Rapids. That's great. Number two, fear the beard. Number three, <laughs> anybody finds that windsock, call the studio. <laughs> That's an inside thing, how we lost some toys while we were at the field doing the... Uh, doing the interviews. Uh, boys track and, uh, well, both track and field teams actually got their first event in uh, this week as well. They had a tri-meet uh, at Centennial uh, on, or it was more than a tri-meet, I guess, because uh, the Cardinals finished in fourth place. The boys did. Some of the better finishes, the 4 by 8 relay team finished in first time at 8.44. The 4 by one was the three, third place finisher. Um, hmm. Matt Tanner, Matt, and Nate Muggenberg finishing, getting some better finishes. Um, it's one of the drawbacks we got to work on on, uh, on our rosters, but uh, because uh, that that's how they were on the, the stat sheet. Hey. So, but some third place finishes, couple, a fourth place finishes, a fourth place finish, and a and a fifth place finish in the 800 uh, meters. So, not a not a bad way to start. Um, and uh, it's just the start of a long season. The track teams should be much improved this spring with most of their top level talent returning. Boys team struggled last year, but they were very young and they are j and just coming together under a new leadership. Now in Coach Jansen's second season, the Cardinals seem unified in their mission to make some specific changes to the program. Go! To get everybody focused on the task at hand, you know, to try to do their best. The Cardinals are starting this season hungry and motivated. The returning athletes were disappointed in last year's finishes, but they believe it was really just the beginning of something better. Last year we made some pretty good improvements. I think uh, we got ourselves going and uh, 
we were pretty young last year, and uh, next this year we're all one year older, so we're going to see where we can go from there. An added year of experience and maturity can make a world of difference to a team like this. The Cardinals come in with everyone on the same page, looking to take big strides towards finding more success. And so I feel like this year we're more focused. You know, we're not going to miss um, miss events you know, like last year. Um, I don't know, I feel like everybody's just willing to wor work hard this year. The positive energy surrounding this team is contagious, and the Cardinals are feeding off of its momentum. It's a bit of a contrast from last season's vibe, and the captains are encouraging everyone to keep the current flowing. I'm looking forward to the energy this year, because last year was a little, a little slackish, and this year we have a lot more energy a lot more willingness to do stuff, a lot more motivation. The difference in attitude makes it easier for the team to train for success, especially with a coaching staff that is no longer brand new and has a little better handle on what they have to work with and what those athletes are capable of. We kind of eased into some things, but uh, this year we definitely got the mindset of where we need to improve and where we need to work harder, and uh, we're going to push those kids to hopefully make it to finals and sections and conferences and um, build on those performances. There's a lot of work to be done to get to that point, but this team is already showing the motivation and effort level is there. But so far, practice seems to be looking good. We have some people who are working hard which is always nice to see. Um, there's definitely room for improvement, but as of now, I think, I think we'll be heading into the season all right. Well, they got their first taste. They'll, they'll have some more uh, competitions coming up next week. They're at Elk River on Tuesday and then at Centennial on Thursday, or on Tuesday the 19th. Uh, the following Tuesday, uh, I know that uh, a couple of other teams, Maple Grove Osseo will be there. Yep. Um, so, uh, you know, it's with track and field, it's always a, an interesting thing. Of course, uh, I, Denny Green, the, the girls head coach, did send me an email. He, he had a nice write-up uh, about what happened yesterday. He said, uh, really, the throwing is the only field events they did. It was just um, too cold, too windy, too, too wet. Uh, to, to do the jumps and, and the other uh, events. So uh, it was not a full meet. Um, and for a lot of the meets in the spring, um, you're trying people in different places. You're doing different things. They're really doing, looking for specific things. It's really not about uh, winning every point possible every meet. Yeah, and it's so dependent, obviously, on the weather and getting outside and be able to do those things, actually get on the track and, and, and do the hurdles, do whatever you need to do to be outside to get in, into shape for spring. Yep, and uh, as you said, a little better weather coming. Yep, absolutely. Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> oh, and, and yeah, Howie well, would like to point out. There you Howie, go. Howie <laughs> would like to point out. That uh, Dusty lost a windscreen when he went. I don't feel so bad. To the track team as well. Uh, that's right. We had to talk about the girls' yeah, track I was team. Yeah, waiting for I, that. I, I, I You're looking at me. <laughs> I was expecting you to go. It's, we're a little rusty. It's a preview show. What do you want from us? Uh, girls' team finished third place in that event. Uh, second place finished for the four by eight team. 100 meter hurdles. Kelly Harris. Not a huge surprise to see her taking a first place finish. 14.7 seconds. That's flying. She remember I think finished seventh at state last year in the hurdles. Uh, so nice to have her back. Uh, I'm guessing that's Brianna Clark, but it could be Brielle uh, finishing first place in the 100 meter hurdle or 100 meter dash four by two team. Also first place finish. Uh, Callie Harris also won first in the 300 meter hurdles. Second place finish for the four by 100 meter. Oh, nice early results. Well, the story for the girls, the track and field team is similar to the boys, but they have a little bit of a head start. The Lady Cardinals finished top five in the conference in section last year, and they led by a great group of returning veterans, including an all-state hurdler. Plus, their numbers are growing, adding to their depth and talent. There's a lot of new faces, but I think we're all really close so far, and I think we're going to do really good this year. The girls' track and field is really hoping they can pick up where they left off, and make a bid to be a conference contender by the end of the season. I think we have a lot, a lot more potential this year. We already have a lot of people trying new events, more people showing up to practice, doing the work, putting it in. Establishing that strong work ethic is a great start, but the Cardinals still have a lot of work to do if they want to achieve that potential. Uh, we're growing, but we're also very, very young. Um, we got some good talent, but we also got some girls that we're not quite sure what we have yet, because we're still learning they're still trying to figure out what they can do the veteran leadership on the field will certainly be a benefit 
The returning athletes have been there and they're ready to help their younger teammates recognize their talent and push themselves to achieve more than they thought possible. I think just having a really good mindset will help you. It'll make you go far and just keep pursuing in practice and pushing each other and working hard and just doing whatever the coaches tell you to do. Like the boys, the girls have a singular mindset for success. They're all showing their commitment and pushing to prove to themselves as well as their conference opponents that they are a team to be reckoned with. In the end to say that we've tried our hardest and not just tried our hardest as individuals, but tried our hardest to encourage each and every one to make a PR, to go beyond their limits. Finishing middle of the pack was considered a success for last year's team. But this year, the Cardinals believe they have the talent to go one step further and compete for a conference title and a trip to the state tournament. Whatever it is they do, one thing is for sure, they will do it as a team. But this year I feel like we really brought in together our team culture and we're working together to kind of encourage everyone and to bring our team together as one. Well, and the girls team also will be at Elk River next Tuesday and then at Centennial on the following Tuesday, the 19th. And, uh, you know, it, we look forward to seeing what they're able to accomplish. Great start. You know, Callie Harris uh, picking up where she left off, gets a couple of first place finishes in that first event. Uh, the relay team's looking good. Um, uh, a 100 meter dash uh, first place finish as well. So um, a lot of reason to be excited and they do have a lot of uh, jumpers that are coming back too. So once they add those field events in, it'll be interesting to see what that does to their scores. Yeah, the excitement just to build off what they accomplished last year and they've got some lofty goals this year that it looks like they're going to be able to accomplish if they continue to, to do well. Well, and we will continue to follow them here on Sports Night. Moving right along, boys golf team will open the season next week when they host the annual Bunker Hills Invitational, one of the largest tournaments of the year. Cardinals should be pretty well set up for the spring uh, they, as they didn't have a single senior on the roster last season. With an added year of experience, they could make some moves in the conference standings, and a couple of guys could have a shot to go all the way to the state. Uh, it's a great bunch of kids, and I think they're working hard, and hopefully we can achieve some goals. The Cardinals have had a long time to think about what they might be capable of this spring. Last season was a bit rough, but they didn't have a single senior on the roster. So with all that experience coming back, this year should be different. I think the goal is I'd love to see us uh, finish middle of the pack and do better in the tournaments. Uh, great kids, uh, they're working hard and uh, some really good individuals. I think Mike Ellison and uh, Travis S should have excellent years. All of the veterans were able to spend the offseason working on their games and should be able to start ahead of where they finished. The weather this spring is an added benefit, allowing the team to get out on the course right away. It's definitely great to get out. And a lot of kids are happy. You gotta put up with the cold a little bit, but you just dress warm. Definitely get us ready for some of the more colder matches, but it's great to be out on the course this early. Another major goal for the team this year is to be more consistent. The Cardinals were a very hot and cold team last year, and they hope their added experience will help them be a bit more stable with their scores this time around. The veterans also plan to focus on helping their younger teammates get up to varsity speed as quickly as possible. A more long just consistency, maybe helping improve the, some of the younger kids so that they can come up and be a varsity player next year as their sophomore year. Other than that, I think we're a pretty solid team. This early in the year, everyone is excited to play, and they're working on getting their swings back in good form. But sometimes excitement can work against you, and it's important for the Cardinals to understand they must play within themselves and focus on the little things. And with kids this age, short game is huge, putting and chipping, and uh, from 100 yards in is critical to scoring. They, you know, they all want to hit the long ball, but it's not always long balls from 100 yards and in. If the Cardinals can continue to focus on the process, work on those little things, get in a groove and stay consistent, it seems they should be able to turn some heads this season. And as long as they keep doing what they're doing and doing it for the right reason, everything else should fall into place. Just out here having fun playing golf because we all love the game, so. And that's what it's all about. I mean, all, all sports at this level should be about the love of the game. And Without the beauty is uh, when you talk about golf, it's a love that can last forever. 
you know, you're not going to play baseball into your 50s and 60s. You're not going to play hockey into the, well, maybe a little. Uh, <laughs> but you're not going to play football. But golf, golf, tennis, you know, some, some of those sports, you're able to, to play those uh, throughout your life and, and uh, continue to enjoy it even when you're bad. I am proof of that. <laughs> I still enjoy playing golf. And I'm terrible. Well, you know, the interesting thing to me, Coach Oversky mentioned, is, is, that, is that short game. And, and you know, uh, I'm not much of a golfer, so I haven't golfed in a while. But unless there's a windmill, then I can maybe get on the putting green. But it, it's a mental game. And, and really, yep. it, it, of anything else, it's, it gets in your head. And that short game is so important because you can drive the ball. But if you can't get that short game working, it's, it, your score is going to go downhill. Oh, they, that's why they, they say you drive for, drive for show, putt for dough. Yep. Short games where you can do the most damage to your scores for sure. Uh, Bunker Hills invite coming up on Thursday of next week, and then they're at the TPC Invitational on Monday the 18th. Well, the girls' golf team will start the season with a dual meet against Andover and, a, and Tuesday and a tournament next Thursday. It could be a tough season for the Cardinals squad. They return very little varsity, varsity experience. They know the challenges that lie ahead, and they're ready to take their swings at finding success. Because after all, as Joe said, this is a game they can enjoy well past high school. It's something you can do for like lifelong, so you can just enjoy it for as long as you can. The girls golf team is getting into the swing of spring right away. They've been on the course quite a bit already, even though when we caught up with them, the weather forced them inside to the simulator. Still, they were using that time to become better players. Showing up to practice, of course, and practice as much as you can, like either if you're out on the green putting or in the range just hitting balls so you know how far your distance is, it can go with your clubs. Senior captain Lexi Herman is really the only returning varsity player for the Cardinals. Many of her teammates are picking up clubs for the first time, which means the team is basically starting from scratch. This year we've got a lot of newcomers to the game, so we're going to be going over a lot of the basics and letting them know how to score and how to improve their score rather quickly with a short game. Golf is an incredibly difficult game to master. It takes years, but the spring season is only about eight weeks long. So the team will have to pick things up quickly, and Coach Keeney is really leaning on his captain to help make newer girls learn both the mechanics and the mentality it takes to be successful. With, with the small group we've got and the number of inexperienced golfers, she's gonna have to be you know, more than just a leader. She's gonna have to be um, a caregiver. She's gonna have to be, you know, show some compassion. She's gonna, uh, I have to really get to know these girls really well. So I'm putting a lot on the shoulders of uh, Lexi Herman, but I think she'll be able to handle it. It's a lot of pressure and responsibility, but it's something Herman is looking forward to in her final year of high school golf. At first I was like a little nervous, but I'm actually really excited so I can like help the new people that are coming along and teach them some things that I learned from Mr. Keeney and previous captains so I can all apply that with my teachings this year. The Cardinals goal is simple, do their best in next week's matches, then look to improve their scores each week until the end of the season. Trying to get as many swings as we can in the early season, um, and we're just gonna tackle as best we can. It's a short season, so uh, we start next Tuesday, and we're looking forward to it. It does start next season at the gym of Coon Rapids, although they will be the visiting team when they take on the Andover Huskies, and then the Shamrock Invite uh, is next Thursday, so a couple of events right away in week one. Yeah, it should be, uh, again, we talked about good weather to get their season started outdoors, and it should be a lot, you're right, it should be a lot of fun. And we will have results of that coming up on our next edition of Sports Night, which will be uh, the following uh, week. Uh, lacrosse teams, the only teams we were not able to catch up with, uh, as I mentioned, they did start the season just this week. So uh, boys lacrosse team will start the season against Champlain Park next Friday and then at Centennial on Monday the 18th. And Howie? We'll be there. The girls team uh, will start at Champlain Park next Friday and then host Centennial on Monday the 18th. And we will see them on that Wednesday. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. Here's what we have coming up for you. Baseball on Tuesday against Anoka. Softball on Thursday against Elk River. And then boys lacrosse at Centennial on Monday the 18th. So that's going to do it for this preview edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN for the entire crew, including Howard Shapiro. I'm Joe Young saying goodnight.